I want guys thank you so much for coming um this is just the start of a few series of talks that is going to be organized by Jetwing Eco we're going to be doing series by series um with different species places about wildlife about wildlife tourism so just to start off we decided we will introduce the Sri Lankan jackal project to you so i'm chandika i'm one of the co-founders of of the project we have a small project team uh, that comprises of professors from three universities me and another two uh, friends of mine unfortunately one guy is in an aircraft somewhere the other guy is uh, <laughs> at work so he wasn't able to make it um so yeah i have a small presentation to show you guys so the the reason that we decided to select the jackal was i think it's one of the animals that is hardly talked about people don't uh, talk about it much people don't i mean hardly people look at it you go to yale everyone just just zooms past jackals and everyone's just after the leopards so we thought there must be something interesting about these animals that we need to know and then we so we decided one day with on a late night conversation with uh, dr sampath and viratna from the the kalambi university um that we will go in head and look at jackals and 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 leave the other animals as they are cuz they are popular enough uh taking jackals um they're quite widely distributed throughout the world um africa to europe to the arabian peninsula then asia um but there's three species you've got the golden jackal which you have here uh you've got the side striped jackal and the silver back jackal which you get in the african uh continent moving on so jackal evolution is very interesting i thought that might something that we need to put out there um all the wild canine species evolved from one common ancestor which they call the arn river dog which was all millions and millions of years ago um but the two jackals jackals which they call evolved much earlier than what we call the golden jackal now um so there is a bit of a discrepancy there which even the IUCN um canid specialist group agree on thinking that there needs to be more studies done and more actually genetics done to see whether it's actually actually a jackal or actually not a jackal so there was an interesting study done actually in Africa where what we call the african golden wolf now earlier everyone thought it was the african golden jackal the north african golden jackal in 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 these areas but now genetic testing has gone on to show that no it's it's not the golden jackal but it's actually uh, sorry not the go uh, golden jackal but actually it's the african golden wolf now so even in sri lanka we might be having it might be a little species of a little wolf we don't know yet because we haven't done any studying and and no one has has looked into it yet so yeah this is what it says about that the they actually did the genetic testing they did all the work and they've now put it into a separate species as the african golden wolf so it could be that and if you look at the go back to the, if you look at the tree the the golden jackal it it much closely aligns with the grey wolf and the dog rather than the two actual two jackals so speaking of the jackal project that is what we initiated there's just a few things that we were going to look at we wanted to look at where you get jackals so far what we found out is they're everywhere except up to a certain elevation i think we haven't done any work above kandy yet so it will be interesting to see where from above kandy at horton plains there have been no records yet uh but peak wilderness and all we don't know whether there is is jackals there anymore so we have to something that we want to check and also from the areas above elephant pass that also there is no uh data gathered yet to see whether there are jackals there or were they there before but of course mana island does have so it's interesting to see how they got there and where they got there from um behavior and ecology that's a part of actually that's actually the part of one of my my studies so that also helps in a certain way with conservation to know what we need to do to conserve these animals and and where we need to have the protected areas and and where we need to 
you know set boundaries and and there are certain other elements where the jackaws also become useful to farmers by keeping pests uh, in, in in low numbers and things like that then as i said the genetic work that is probably the core element of of this project and that might show showcase something new to sri lanka we might have a new species we don't know so we're just waiting to see whether that that will happen so that's another part and then of course when we go around talking to people i mean even if you all during your travels you ask people whether you've seen jackals everyone say ah is there hitia then or they were there before but they're not there now so there is something happening number one could be pesticides pesticides could be a a major issue so it'll be interesting to see with this whole ban in i don't know whether they've banned it or whether they've not banned it but it's <laughs> we don't know so it'll be interesting to see whether that's one of the causes of it or is it habitat destruction and the final one this is something that i added because i have a affiliation to uh, tourism we want to do elevate the species just like how the leopard is to also be a part of the key species that people would come in to see i mean though that we don't really think about it in sri lankans don't really look at it there are people who are very fond of jackals i mean some people when you go on safari they'd be satisfied seeing a jackal even if they don't see a leopard but it it it's just come that for us it's it's all about the leopard 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 and then you know you get some people who come in and they were like oh we saw two jackals or we saw i mean i've had a guest who go went with me they saw a jackal and a domestic dog face off and that was that was really exciting for them it was more exciting for them than than seeing a leopard who was just sleeping on a tree so that was yeah see another part of the project so about the sri lankan jackal speaking i mean if anyone has anything just you can stop me anytime and ask whatever you want that's that's fine uh speaking about the sri lankan jackal i said found throughout the island it's very adaptive so uh, just one thing go ahead that's latin right canis canis aureus naria that naria is the singular word for naria is the singular word that they use. you call it naria some people call it hivalai depends on okay. certain areas but the that's the naria right. part comes from the scientific name Uh, because the work done in 1916 not genetic work but it was a uh, morphological work and that was also looking at the teeth uh and the skull formations they they thought that with those differences in the skull and the teeth that the sri lankan jackal but it is not endemic it is also found in southern india southern india the the skull morphology and and the dentition of the southern indian jackal and the sri lankan jackal are similar So that's the word naria came about. So it was the scientist who named it. He added the word naria into it. And then singalese. It and the singalese of course adopted it or it was being called naria and then because of that they added naria to 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 the name. So it it all depends on the scientist who did the did the work. They put their some people put their names on it but they decided to go with the with the local name on it. um and it is also the only species of uh canine or wild dog found in the island uh cats wise we have actually four species of cats but when it comes to canines we only have one whereas africa and other places they have the african wolf they have the painted uh or the cape hunting dog india has the dole uh india also has the wolf so we only have one species but being a small island we it's pretty good that we actually have a species of canine together with all the cats and the elephants and everything like that as well um so speak, going a bit more into jackals jackals are very family oriented uh not like most i mean dogs are mostly pack even if you take wolves you take hunting dogs you take dogs wherever you go you look at the 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 wild canines are all pack animals so uh, sri lankan jackals but generally they are more pair paired and um i think it's like 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 most humans they they get together for life so the the mating pair will stay stick together for life we don't know what happens if one of them dies or one of them gets injured we don't know so but they are family oriented you get generally you can see a few together but this should be the mom the dad and the litter and sometimes the previous litter the aunts and the uncles also stay back and help out uh rearing the small ones are they ever domesticated 
honestly saying i have never heard of sri lankan jackals being domesticated i have not heard of it i haven't seen it i'm not too sure it, they could be i mean they are like a dog um you get them in the zoo but i have never heard of someone actually uh, taking one and and rearing it otherwise you would hear of it i guess that's because of the stigma that comes with this animal there's a lot of stigma that comes that it's always associated with death um and rotting carcasses um and things like that um scavenger. it's a scavenger it is a scavenger but it's also a very good hunter um so that's probably why that they're not domesticated and of course i mean i do have a sound clip but i i i don't want to play that here because it's it's very eerie when a jackal starts howling and when they start communicating it's very very eerie so that's probably why people have not domesticated and that's probably why also they have this bad reputation of being i mean that um in egypt the uh, anubis the the god that is um the the dog headed god so it's a jackal headed god and it's associated with the underworld and death so that's probably why the jackal is not domesticated people must be thinking that it's a bad omen but actually it's it's a very family oriented uh, animal and it 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 sticks with its partner for life so they and they always take care of each other whether it's feeding wise or whether it's when it comes to diseases and things like that so pups are not very hard, common to see in sri lanka um because they always hide them very well in dens because obviously they share the the land with the the other predators so they have to hide them but they're not hard to see we're very lucky to see this in yala that right out in the open and they were playing so it's 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 actually a really nice sight um it's it's something that us as i mean people who are promoting tourism it's good to you know something like this a picture like this would would be worth a lot so moving on again where are these pictures from so this is if you can see pratik this is yala uh, this is vilpattu this again is yala on the main road um so as i was saying family oriented they groom themselves so that what they say is it helps to create bonds uh between the family members so they groom themselves and also they they kind of do this gift giving thing this is this is something that i've only observed once so i don't know whether it's a coincidence or whether it's something that regularly happens where he just came and this one came and gave the branch to the other one um, it was a bit hard to tell whether they're male or female because it's hard to say from the size there generally both the same size and the features are also quite similar the males can be a little bit larger but generally they both the same size but then this was this gift giving behavior it was observed once uh that was in yeah these both these pictures are in vilpattu again they stick together family oriented and they do this scent marking thing where one goes and does the scent marking on the ground and the other one goes and rubs himself i guess that's kind of saying ownership kind of an ownership thing it's not exchanging rings or anything like that they go and mark themselves with the each other's scents so it it's actually very funny it's comical when they do that cuz they're rolling all over there i was lucky to get this yoga pose that they were doing um importance so you have food chains you have different animals at different levels doing different 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 things um so if you take the leopard it's right there on the top it it eats it also scavenge but it's one of the key hunters it keeps all the big prey down but it's very shy it's very elusive and when you get closer to human habitation um it's a bit different i think in mumbai and certain areas like that but in sri lanka when you get closer to human habitation except in a few estates you see that the leopards are they get either more elusive or they keep away but when it comes to canids and jackals they tend to get closer to human habitation we've seen it we've seen actually we've got records of more jackals outside of national parks than within national parks um direct observations bug marks um road kills is is it's a sad way to say that there are jackals in the area but that's one way you can tell that they are in that area so they are very useful you can say to agriculture are they nocturnal they 
that's a, that's a, that's another thing they are diurnal when it comes to national parks you can see them 12 noon you can see them in the night um you can hear them in the night but when it gets closer to human habitation they become more nocturnal but that is it's it's something we've just observed so we need to gather more data to actually suggest that you know when it comes close to people they're more nocturnal when they go into the national parks they're more freely they freely act freely act so they they and they prey on a wide species are not only scavenge scavenging is one thing they clean up they clean up all the dead bodies i mean of animals rotting animals they clean all that but they also prey actively on monkeys and peacocks peacocks are big nuisance now because um number one i think the wet zone is getting drier and drier so that's why you see peacocks everywhere i mean there are peacocks in colombo now that's something we never saw um so the peacocks are starting to spread into the wet zone from the dry zone and one reason it's it could be climate change why it's getting drier the other reason is a lack of predator cuz jackals eat everything from the adult peacock right down to the egg they eat the whole cycle of of a peacock so that's one good way to keep peacocks at at bay especially in agricultural areas then the other one is mouse deer also can be a pest uh wild boar I don't think jackals will take on a fully grown wild boar but it will be some sort of a deterrent if especially the wild boar has little piglets and 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 little families so they are very important so um recently we had a there's a committee that was established to look into this whole land reform there was a bit of a controversy that was going on where the lands were handed over to the local governments and so this other state forests or what they call so the the expert panel was uh, put in that consisted of environmentalists and professors and 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 all that so they decided that jack uh, jackal was one of the key species that needed to be in areas that can be used as uh, an indicator for an area to be protected especially where the other state forest is contiguous with farmland and um agriculture paddy whatever it is um so how many of you all knew that we had jackals in colombo has anyone seen one you seen sir ah that that <laughs> sorry you probably are being disrespectful <laughs> to the jackals but well close proximity also <laughs> so yeah we've got jackals in colombo and not talking about outskirts of maybe this horana that area no 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 this is um talavatugoda and yeah this these two the two on the corner talavatugoda yeah this is these two near the uh, the talangam tank and this it, it's hard to see this is uh, batramulla um i don't know what that road is called sorry denzil kobeka do out where setsiri pai is uh, where setsiri pai so right opposite setsiri pai actually wow and and not in the night or in the <laughs> in broad daylight so we have jackals in colombo but they they keep away we also have fishing cats in colombo quite a good population of fishing cats but we've got jackals in colombo which is something that we didn't uh, didn't know about honestly I, even i wasn't expecting it when uh, when they, these guys actually sent this pictures in and said oh we saw this at talaga and i was like crazy but then we went and looked at the habitat there is certain areas so they avoid they avoid people they avoid domestic dogs so they are avoiding a lot of things they are avoiding the cars because we haven't found any road kills thank god we haven't found any road kills of jackals in colombo um talking about prey interactions as i said they are very good hunters Uh, this is a bit hard to see but this is actually half a mouse deer in its mouth uh, so they very they like eating mouse deer they they're not just scavengers they don't go just after um dead animals they love to hunt themselves and they're very good hunters and they work in teams um actually their hunting rate is more successful than a leopard's hunting rate cuz they you there's there's a old book that had one where it was talking about how these two jackals were hunting um jungle fowl where one was showing itself to the jungle fowl and just moves forward slowly slowly 
and then the jungle fowl keeps moving away from this guy who's showing himself. Unknowingly, there was another one hidden, and he, this other one, the one who was visible, just drove the jungle fowl right into the, the other one's mouth. So they they work as a team, and they're very successful hunters, but they also do scavenge a lot. So this is both mouse deer, it's something that, like this is Vilpattu, where someone sent this picture in, this is actually block two in Yala. Um, scavenging, yes, they're very good. They they do scavenge as well. That's that's another thing that they do. They keep the care. this is a this is a leopard kill. Uh, it was definitely way too big. This car it was like a sub adult buffalo, way too big for the jackal to kill it. But it was his head is head stuck in here. So they do scavenge as well. Um, and you have these funny interactions as well. Sorry, where. Heard of deer, jackals trading, and and I guess these two are friends. So it's it's very interesting to to see. How, I mean, they do prey on them, but then you've got them sitting. I mean, you would not see a leopard and a and a, and a deer sitting like this together. I mean, this is this is just like two friends sitting down and talking. So it's it's very interesting. We don't know exactly why this is happening. What well, this is one observation we did make was when there's just one jackal, and the the deer herd has a big stag with big antlers, I guess it can keep it at bay. But the jackal also could be cunning, waiting for a moment that they drop their guard and go after a fawn or something. But this herd had no fawns. So that must be why they were very relaxed. This, of course, is, is someone sent this to me from uh, Kumana, uh, which, is, which is very strange. They're just, just sitting there, or oh, this deer is injured and ill, and he's just waiting for it to die. We don't know. So, but it's, it's very strange because I've seen this just recently, my last trip to Wilpatu also, I saw it right in front of the manicula bungalow, there's just the deer and the jackal, they're just seated there together, no, not, not doing. small one, no, you're talking about a The deer? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not a small one, but this herd had quite, I mean, not very small fawns, but he did have, and he was on the road actually, and I was following him and he just trotted and just, they are a bit alert, as you can see, the tails are up, but no alarm calling, like if, if, if a leopard was out in the open like this, this whole herd would be going crazy. They'd be looking at it, stomping their feet, shouting, but just sitting, nothing. But they do, I mean, this, I can't show you the alarm call, but here, the jackal deer, the deer were dead scared. But there were two jackals. So it could be that if they're in a pack, they're scared. If they're not in a pack, they're not scared. We don't know, it's just... We need more observations, no, more field time to go and, and, and show, see what's actually going on. Um, so distribution wise, we've got from quite a few areas and they've also got a bit of a variation in their, their coloring. It could be seasonal uh, with the rains uh, or with, uh, with the dry season coming in, the, the coat colors, it could be shedding. Uh, but there is a bit of colors, it's very hard to see the colors on this. but. They do have variations. Um, so threats, threats wise, number one, I would say is road kills. Um, not finding road kills is also concerning because we we're looking at the numbers being low. Then that means, uh, but road kills are quite few since we started the project. I think one, two, three, four, four, five road kills maybe that we've come across. Uh, two on the Southern Expressway. This was on the way to Manor. Uh, another one on the Anuradhapura Putlam Road. So quite a few road kills. Is, is, it's, it's one way, it's an indicator that jackals are there. Um, and the other, indi I mean, it's a threat. It's a severe threat. And the other one is disease. Um, it's not very clear on this, but this, this jackal has, probably has mange which means that either they're coming into contact with domestic dogs or domestic cats or something that has mange, but this jackal has mange and this was inside the park. This jackal was inside the park in Wilpat. Right. Um, so this is the part where I think everyone... Could your study be looking at yes. things like mange and... Mm -hmm. So what we want to look at is the interactions between mange mm -hmm. does not... I, not usually occur very naturally in, in the forest because the animals do groom themselves, they keep themselves clean. It has to come from an outside source. 
but I did speak to uh, Dr. Nalnika from Petwet about mange. So what she told me was it could be a different skin disease, but it, it most likely looks like mange. Um, the only way to confirm it is, is to swab it. So we will be looking at diseases as well. Um, that is a part of the genetic testing because we'll be taking the blood samples and everything. So it will be uh, is it, disease. Is it, is it drug you can use to get it a mange very easily? Yeah. It's just the, the my left department doesn't uh, administer drugs to jackals. If it was a leopard, yes, but <laughs> they. These guys, leopards will kill them. Um, wild boar will kill them. Will they kill a leopard? Cub, yes, because it's all competition. They're all competing for the same prey species, the same space. They're both predators, so if they get hold of a small leopard cub, yes. But a leopard, anything more than nine months is, is too much for them. So everyone, this, this project also wanted to include what we call citizen science, um, where people also get involved. So whenever you all are traveling, you hear about it, you can send in pictures, you can send in just information. If you see a roadkill, don't touch it, but you can take a picture uh, with the geotag and send it. Um, it, social media is up, it's not very active at the moment, but we, that's one thing we're looking at to get it going active. Uh, but you know, if you're doing that, you'd want to do that with all the like, species of animals, not just jackals. The, the road, the, the information coming in from people? Whether it's leopards, whether it's... Yeah. Whether, you know, if you have maybe 10 different species, then you can popularize that and then maybe the Japanese can get involved in popularizing Yeah, so that, there's, right? there's an element of that as well. What, we could do that, but uh, Nirmal, I think I told you when we have that meeting, the problem with people who are studying all these, let's say, megafauna, the leopards and the elephants and, and, and all those things, are very, very protective of their species. So if we try and poke ourselves in and say we are getting information about leopards or something like that. You could do that to a shared website so they can, yeah. they, they can upload. The there's a lot of egos involved in conservation. Yeah, there's a, lot of, as, there's a lot of egos involved in conservation. So it's very difficult to work with a lot of people, especially because they don't want to share their information. But, and and it, it, it conflicts a little bit. So that's why we thought we'll just stick to the jack halls. But no, that's, that's, that's a good piece of advice that we can look into. I mean, you go to any Jackson uh, hotel, there's a poster like this. Yeah. And every two is like, you know, there's a jackal, there's a leopard, there's an elephant, there's a, I don't know, buffalo. You name it all, this one and upload your photographs to this website as a uh, yeah. part of a you know uh, crowdfunding uh, you know not crowd uh, yeah uh, social media thing check out wildlife conservation and then you can get maybe it could guys to go in and you know there's a database they could take uh, the yeah, information it's a database and the leopard guy can go in and maybe sit down through that and you know I don't know download the Dropbox or whatever right uh, and that's probably something that can be. You know, you can put that on Sri Lankan Airlines, you know, you can do that at the airport, you know, so that an incoming tourist sees. I heard about this in Africa, they were doing this in Africa. Right, right, yeah, they've been doing it in Africa as well, they've been doing it, they've been doing something similar in the US as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what's going to come to this, uh, this part. So, as I think everyone knows, I have a background in tourism as well as this wildlife. So, what we wanted to do was get all the DMCs involved um, to get some, da get together data. I mean, our guests travel all over the country, they travel to every single corner of the country basically. So we have this very simple questionnaire that could be given out to the guides or if the guests are willing to do it, they could do it. Um, all they have to do is just, just fill it up, they meet people, they go on treks, they go on excursions, they meet other people. It's just among having that small conversation, you could just simply ask whether you saw this and just tick these boxes. And this is also very valuable data because we can't be everywhere all the time. So, and we might miss certain people where the others will go and meet, the guides will meet, the guests will meet. So that's something that we wanted to do and we wanted to introduce. I don't know Ishant, if it's okay, if you guys, when you guys are giving out your tour package, you could just speak to the guide and give this over and ask them to just simply fill it in. It's just, it just becomes valuable data. Um, we thought about doing it on a Google thing with a QR code or something, but it might not work too out well because if people don't want to be always using their phones, but this is just a simple piece of paper where it's either yes, no answers to it. So if that's something that that's what we wanted to introduce to 
I think, I mean, all the DMCs, but I'm going to introduce it here first. And we can see how it goes. If everyone's in agreement with that, then we can, let's see how it goes. And uh, let's see how much data we gather from that. QR code as well, yeah. That goes to a Google Sheet, yeah. Yeah, we'll see how it, we'll see how the, the feedback is from whatever limited tours that, I mean, we've got quite a bit of work coming in now, so let's see how it goes. I mean, anyone, you travel all over the place with your work as well, so anyone who's traveling, we can make it available on social media as well, these forms. Where is, where can you find the question before? This? Yeah. I mean, at the moment, it's not there anywhere. But we can put it up on a Google something with a link so that you could download it or or do a QR code. I think that 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 would work. So yeah, that's just what I wanted to introduce about the Jackal project. And now it's open to anyone who wants to know anything about Jackals or pictures or I mean even wildlife in general. It's fine. Uh, so. The thing, pictures wise, most of these pictures are from Yala, Vilpattu, uh, but yeah, this is on the way to Mana, though it's a road kill. This is block 2, Yala, Yala, Vilpattu, Udavala is also a good place uh, for jackals. Yala, Yala, Vilpattu, again, Vilpattu. Kumana. In Sri Lanka? No. This is the first time that there's been even an attempt to study because there's been um, data gathered from people passing, doing other research. They said they saw Jackal doing this, doing that, but nothing pinpoint and focused on it. No. So this is the first time. So whatever data we gather from this will all be novel basically so will be there's there's theories so we either prove the theory is right or prove the theory is wrong uh, the genetic test is what <laughs> i'm like looking forward to to see whether this is actually a jackal or whether we've been harboring a small wolf um, all this time we don't know it could end up just being a sri lankan golden jackal or it could end up being you know whatever name we want to give it so Yeah, so. We have no idea of ballpark numbers, nothing like that. So, if, you, if we really look at what we've been doing, inside parks we do see jackals. But I think we see more leopard than we do see jackals. Maybe it's because we're going looking after the leopards, but the thing is, we do travel quite a bit inside the park. But um, I don't know, when was the last time anyone went to Yala recently? You went? You saw leopards? You see a jackal? Yeah. Hey? So it's, I don't know whether it's concerning or not, but we've seen quite a bit outside of parks that also could be concerning because they're not protected. They're coming into contact with people, uh, dogs. <laughs> That's true. I mean, yeah, the parks will be protected now, but we don't know. They look more like a dog, so they're probably left to go. But there was quite a bit of uh, incidences that happened um, in Horana, that, that area where it was rabies though, where there was people actually killed as well by jackals and, and there was more stigma added and people were walking around with clubs and knives and swords saying we're being attacked by jackals. <laughs> so it, it didn't make it any better for them, but then actually when we d people dug down into what actually happened was um, it was rabies and that area the domestic dogs have not been vaccinated so it was huge ra rabies and recently um, so we, there's another girl who's also studying another section of this she's looking at the dentition of, of, of jackals so they had gone to this area to look for to ask the people what happened to the dead animals normally the, you have to send the head to um, the infectious disease unit to test for rabies, but none of that had happened. Only one or two had been sent, and they've 
they were incinerated. So they dug up 30 jackals. <laughs> and it was just two, one person who had got killed by jackals, but they dug up 30. And then those people had said there are more. So it's just been outrage and let's wipe them all out. So it's sad. Tough, but any dry zone area uh, which is connected to forests, uh, rubber estates. I mean, any coloring has been done here? Talangam attack. If you go early morning, there's a chance. That's just here in Colombo. No, coloring animals is is very um, it's very reluctantly done here. So the only animals that have been collared in Sri Lanka are uh, elephants and fishing cats. Those are the only two animals that have been properly satellite tagged. And of course now the birds. They did a massive study on the birds where they put satellite tags in uh, the, the migratory birds. So no collaring has been done. I mean something that we can look into, but at the moment the wildlife is, uh, they have, I don't know what the reason is, but they don't like collaring because they have to catch animals and I don't know whether it's that or it's just they just can't be bothered. One, one issue Ishant is, I mean if, if you saw, I mean this is, this is the same animal, but how different does it, let's just get another picture, I mean how different does it look from this and this is all the way in, uh, in, in Vilpattu. So it's very difficult to tell them apart unless you have a really good picture where you can count, actually count the, the whisker spots. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's unlike the leopard, it's very hard to tell them apart. They do have certain patterns that, you know, you can look at, but that depends on the light and, and so many things. So it's very hard to count numbers, but it's, it's a part of the project. We we're trying to get a rough estimation on, on how, how much many jackals that we might have uh, in Sri Lanka and where they are, what their ranges are. So, and, and everyone can, I mean, Everyone here can help as well, do their part for conservation. Anyone else want to know anything? Singaraja, very rare. Uh, it is one of our study sites as well. Um, they are there. It's it's just they've got plenty of places to hide, and they've got probably plenty of food around where they don't need to come into where you can visibly see them. Um, it could be prey, uh, hunting, but they do they do eat cr crabs and, 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 and things like that as well. So you found them on the coast as well. Um, so Singaraja, you do get them. You do get them in the rainforest, but not as much as you do get them in the dry zone. Or we're not seeing them as much as we do see them in the dry zone. Because number one, the, the wet zone forests are much thicker. So it... it might be a bit more difficult and and we visit the dry zone more than we do the the wet zone forest and wet zone forest mainly where we're walking so some somehow animals get very used to vehicles they get very habituated to vehicles but when it comes to people on foot it's not a i mean because people would be seeing leopards in singaraja then if they get habituated to people walking up and down that trail but there's very only a handful of people who have actually seen. I mean, Professor Gotagama says he's only seen a tail, and he's probably the most the person who's visited Singaraja the most. So they get very habituated to numbers. Could be the same. We don't know. I mean, they're on the Mana Island as well, so they're everywhere, but under threat, as I think we all are in these days. <laughs> Cool. Anything else? All good, Nirbha? Perfect. Pratik? Good, good, good. Shant, all good? Good. Thanks, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming.